Tala for Lover and welcome to How to Be Samoan, a podcast where Samoans discuss their identity and how they came to be Samoan. Um, today is our first episode and my name is Moana Pitaya. I am the host of How to Be Samoan. So I thought it would be fitting for me to begin by telling my story about how I formed my own identity as a Samoan. So I was born in Hamilton, New Zealand um, when I was just a baby, less than two, we moved to Melbourne, Australia. I have, both my parents were born here in Samoa. My dad was born in Malia and my mum was born, I think, to a hospital. I need to check on my mum for that. But both of them were born in Samoa and have Samoan heritage. And so I am Samoan. Growing up in Australia, I was raised by my mother um, in a single parent home and at first it was quite rough. We lived in com housing commission houses, um, flats in Clifton Hill where we faced racism and where I didn't actually know what being a Samoan was. There was no there was nobody for me to compare with. We lived in a pretty multicultural area. Um, the primary school we attended, majority were Greek, so we learned Greek language. Um, we had no access to Samoa other than our family and my mum's friends. Um, my mum then, she couldn't take living in this area and so she found a place for us in another housing commission home in box hill and this was a, a full-on home three bedrooms and it was a lovely area to grow up in um so we moved there when i was eight eight because i remember um shortly after moving that i had my baptism and instead of attending the church that was close to where we now lived, I wanted to go back to the church where I knew people. And so I remember that quite clearly. And again, there were no <laughs> Samoans. I did remember attending primary school with a boy from Nauru. And I didn't know what Nauru was at the time, but now I do. And so I'm happy to know that I attended school with a boy from Nauru but there were no Samoans and like I mentioned earlier I won my baptism I was raised in a Mormon um, Latter-day Saint household by a single parent and we attended the English English um, English services and so we didn't get church, we didn't get anything Samoan through church. Um, most of the time I was, we were the only Samoans in our ward. That w was for a while and then more Samoans joined the area and that number grew. But yeah, pretty much raised in a white neighborhood knowing white people not, not understanding anything Samoan. Um, when we first moved to Box Hill, um, we did go to Samoa as a family for a, a trip. And so that was my first bite of being in Samoa because the last time I was there, I was a baby and did not remember. But this time I was seven, eight. So I could remember um, I remember my grandmother Pato Sina who was a teacher and we attended her school in Apia Primary not Apia Primary Apia Primary? Yes, Apia Primary School so she was the principal there and we attended Apia Primary School and 
and then my grandparents Va'ulu and Sileoleonga were also alive at that time and so we got to spend time with them as well as my great-grandmother Lelenga um, and so I was able to form some memories but I was still not able to tell you what a Samoan was I don't like I didn't understand the language I had no concept of what the cultural protocols were um, didn't know any of the foods there was nothing so even though I'd visited Samoa I knew I had Samoan family the most I could tell you in that was the most I could tell you in Samoan was stop or go away and as a seven or eight year old that's that doesn't really mean anything because I'm still trying to I'm I'm still learning and so that didn't really matter to me what mattered to me was when I returned to Samoa as a teenager so some were sent to Samoa too because they were naughty um, I was sent to Samoa because my grandmother needed somebody there to help her and to keep her company and as a teenager brought up in Australia I we clashed we clashed quite a lot and so on my trip to Samoa as a teenager I attended Samoa College um, I was 15 16 years old so at that pretty rebellious stage of being a teenager and because I didn't know anything about Samoa it kind of made things even worse so here I was trying to understand hormones and trying to figure out who I was as a person and why things are happening while also trying to understand why I would get told off because I threw away wrapping paper or why I would get told off because I wanted to stay at a cousin's house or why I couldn't catch the bus home. Now these are all things that actually made sense to people living in Samoa. So you don't throw out wrapping paper because wrapping paper is expensive and you can reuse the wrapping paper on another gift. So that's why we don't throw out wrapping paper. Um, I couldn't catch the bus because my mother did not trust me and so she told, asked my grandmother to not let me catch the bus which was not communicated to me <laughs> but only to my grandmother and so there was resentment towards my grandmother because here I was a teenager used to catching the public transport home from school and to other places and now I couldn't have I didn't have that freedom and so there was a resentment built because I didn't know that was not communicated and those expectations were not explained to me and um, that was another learning experience about being a Samoan is that when you're younger you're not always going to understand everything and because people don't talk to you about things sometimes even as an adult people don't talk to you as an adult they still think that you're young that your age makes you young so you're not somebody to be spoken to only people my age or their age should be spoken to and um that was another concept of being in Samoa that i couldn't grasp and i could not understand um so in my trip to Samoa as a teenager <laughs> I learned that um, I learned to lie I learned to keep secrets and I learned that I could not speak freely and these are because um, if I told the truth I would get in trouble if I told the truth I wouldn't be able to do what I would normally do yeah and again that all comes down to 
the generational communication that does not always exist or it did not exist then hopefully it's gotten better living in Samoa as a teenager kind of sparked it sparked a fire in me to learn more because my classmates would teach me swear words and would laugh at me when I used them because I didn't know what I was saying um, so to me I wanted to learn more about Samoa because I didn't want to be made fun of or called a pālangi and so when I graduated from high school the only place that I knew that taught Samoa at that time, Samoan and Samoan culture at that time was Hawaii and so I got I applied for university at Brigham Young University in Hawaii and was accepted and so I went to Hawaii to learn about Samoan culture. It was a long way away and while it was difficult it was the most rewarding thing that I have ever done. So I was able to learn Samoan in in a safe space. I was not laughed at if I mispronounced something. I was not belittled if I got something wrong. There was encouragement and that made me feel safer in speaking Samoan, in trying to learn Samoan. So yeah, it was the language. I learned more about the culture as well. Hawaii. I went to Hawaii to learn Samoan. I know it's crazy, but that's what happened. I went to Hawaii to learn Samoan so that I could feel closer to my culture and to understand who I was as a person, as a Samoan. Yeah, so after Hawaii, I went back to Australia, gave birth to my son, and then two years later, we moved to Samoa. So in 2005, my son and I attended our family reunion and then we never left. We never left for nine whole years. Oh, we left on holidays, but we didn't stop living in Samoa for nine years. And so, that was probably one of the best times in my life because I had a little bit of an understanding of why people do the things they do in Samoa um, culturally and I had a little bit of understanding of the language which made life a little bit easier and I was no longer as a teenager and fear book or thinking that I knew everything and that everyone owed me whatever it is that I wanted. So as 20 something year old, moved to Samoa with my son and yeah, I worked in different areas. So I got to know life in Samoa as a working person. And that was pretty much where I first got all of my experience from because working at during university I worked at restaurants and as a security guard none of that really really prepared me for for life <laughs> other than being able to make salads and poke but um it wasn't like a career starting job that I had in Hawaii Whereas in Samoa, I was able to get work. I, at first, I worked at the Australian High Commission in, in AusAid as part of an admin team. So I got the office work experience. And then I moved to a television station, Lao TV. And then I got it. In that position, I learned how to do camera work. I learned how to do editing. I learned how to be comfortable in front of a camera. Um, yeah, so all of that <laughs> um, 
helped me to be who I am today and being able to be in front of the camera on YouTube and social media. I then went into the water sector and worked at an engineering company, engineering consultancy, um, where I learned how to do grants and they also encouraged me to in increase my education and so I started to do my master's degree in community and international and community development so through working with this engineering firm Cooper Engineering and Water um, I was able to complete my master's in international community development and then I went on to work for Tyre King um, it was actually made redundant so being a good person business person you need to know when it is time for you to cut your um, cut your losses so that you can keep your business going and so my position was made redundant and then I was blessed to have family who took me on and allowed me to work for them in for Tari King in the restaurant here in town and so I got to see what life was as a customer service person here in Samoa as well then I went on to work for the Independent Water Schemes Association and I got to see firsthand how villages work, how communities within the villages work so that they can achieve things like um, water systems within their village and, and it was an amazing experience. Not only did I learn my language increased during that time, I learned more about how culturally things should be done um, or are done within the Matai system and that was that was eye-opening for me because I'd never like the only time I'd been I'd seen this cultural like the Ava ceremony the talking between the, the Matai the only time I'd seen that was when my grandmother had taken me to Matautu and we were, she was talking about, I think it was funeral arrangements. And she told me that I had to sit with my legs crossed and my feet covered. And if I couldn't do that, then to get a mat and make sure that it covered my feet while I had them outstretched, but never put them in front, always to the side, pointing out out of the father and so that was about the only time I had any kind of experience with village um, interactions and village meetings and and seeing them during work with independent water schemes totally blew my mind like the language they spoke so fast each person knew exactly what their role was and each person knew um, knew how to do their role and that to me um, was great that was that was one of the best things that I had learned while working with the Independent Water Schemes Association of course I learned like report writing and grant writing but that's not gonna really help me <laughs> um, be me but then it's helping me now. Okay, I'm going too fast. I'm going to go back. So I finished working at Independent Water Schemes Association and then I um, I became an Australian volunteer for International Development, AVID. Yep. And so that meant I was placed with Mrs. Reed's preschool. So Mrs. Reed is my grandmother and she started a preschool here in Samoa after she retired from being a teacher um, and a principal. Um, so 
we kept that going even after she had passed and being able to become an avid or a volunteer to help help Mrs. Reed's preschool move forward um, was an amazing opportunity for me because I've always loved education. I've always loved seeing my grandma teach and and so that was something that was close to my heart and I was really looking forward to it. But <laughs> um, everyone was moving away from Samoa at that time and so the family decided it was time to close Mrs. Reed's preschool. So what did that mean for me? That meant that I was blessed to then be able to transfer to Samoa Water Authority. Samoa Water Authority, again, I got to learn so much from them because it was a higher position and I got to see how management was and how things were managed. But then I also got to see the Samoan cultural side and I also got to see interactions between employees and bosses and be the supervisor of an employee and that was kind of interesting but yeah um so I didn't I had yeah I had communication issues <laughs> because I'd never had an employee that I needed to overtake and then um I was going by how I saw other people supervise their employees and I was not really proud with how that turned out because I knew from observations in Australia that we need to be respectful of our employees no matter where they are no matter what level they are you need to treat each and every employee with respect and I tried, I tried my best, but um, I did lose my cool on a few occasions, but I'm not exactly sure why I'm bringing that up. I guess it's it, again, that communication between elders and those with seniority and how they treat or how there's not the communication that is needed for everyone to be understanding of each other and respectful and um, yeah so we can grow it, it's also it was more of a I'm manager I know what I need to know and I don't need to tell you and you should just kind of guess I, I, I saw that and I copied that and it didn't work out well so yeah Summer Water Authority was an amazing place and it was great to learn from them and best experience one of the greatest experience yeah then we moved back to Australia and in Australia I loved Samoa I missed it I guess I was depressed because part of me did not want to leave Samoa but I knew that I needed to bring my son home so that he had the education that he needed because he was not getting it in Samoa. Yeah, I was a bit depressed when I went to, back to Australia and I was lost and it made it even worse because here I am, I have 20 plus years of experience and a master's degree and nobody was hiring me. I couldn't even get job interviews, not even for, for a job at a supermarket. I couldn't find a job. So not only did I miss Samoa, I couldn't find a job. <laughs> and that just made me doubt everything about myself and then I found this this course a program 
where they taught you skills that you needed to start your own business and one of the things that needed to be done was that you needed to start a business that that you've not started before so I'd already done freelance writing and so I knew I couldn't start that business because that's something I'd already been doing um, and so because I was missing Samoa, I thought, what can I do that can help Samoa while I'm here in Australia? And that is where my business, Messina you know, Treasures of Samoa, came about. I initially started because I wanted to bring Samoan products made in Samoa to Australia and sell them and sell them there so that they could increase their market um it's expensive to ship things from Samoa and the quality unless I'm here to come and pick out each and every piece the quality is not consistent um and so then I decided to make friends with other Samoans here in Melbourne and discovered there are Samoans who are in business and making their own products here in Melbourne. And so I extended my business to include products made by Samoans from around the world. That is how Messina came about. We've now extended that to include Samoan language, um, Siva Afi, and children's programs, all of which were not available to me as a, a single parent, as a child, as a teenager. And so I wanted to bring these resources to someone around the world so that they never have to travel halfway across the road to learn about who they are as a Samoan and what they feel life is like to be a Samoan. Through my business, Messina Treasures of Samoa, I have come to meet and interact with Samoans all over the world. And it has been amazing to see how similar we have all been in trying to form our own identity, in trying to learn someone, in trying to overcome stigmas and negative stereotypes, in coming to understand our culture and the role it plays in who we are as a people, even though we're no longer living on the island. And so that is where where this podcast was formed because there's no one way to be a Samoan. My, my story as a Samoan is different to my story, my brother and sister's stories. It's different to my parents' stories. Being Samoan is individual to each person. Yes, the Samoan culture which will always be the same not there's a difference between Samoan culture and being a Samoan person um and understanding how the Samoan culture forms your identity as a Samoan and I guess that's where this podcast likes to have those kinds of discussions so that everyone can have their voices heard and to have their opinions heard and whether we agree with it or not, those discussions are important to have so that these issues are no longer kept kept a secret. I don't think that's the correct word, but kept under wraps so that we all feel comfortable having these conversations, um, whether or not we agree with what is being said because nobody's going to agree on everything. We would all be the same people if that were the case. It's the fact that we feel safe having the discussions and disagreeing or agreeing 
with respect and that is what I hope to achieve with this podcast and yeah if you feel that this is something that is going to be good for our salmons around the world you know make sure to like this this episode um, if you'd like to um be be on on how to be someone <laughs> message us email us um don't leave your email in the comments please because or because that's really not safe but um our email is in our channel information um yeah email us tell us when is good time for you to be here on how to be someone um yeah if you have any questions if there are things that you think we should discuss in our episodes leave them in the comment section thank you so much for joining us here on how to be someone we hope that it has helped you and that you join us for our next episode Puff Tai Te Lava, Tofa Sui Fua.